morning, everybody. It's good to see everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning also to those of you who are watching on the live stream this morning. Uh, we want you to be fully involved and engaged with what is going on in this place. And, uh, and we pray that uh, you will feel the Holy Spirit moving in your life, whether you're in the building or at home today. Uh, God is with us. He's an amazing God. He can be in a thousand places all at the same time, which is wonderful, isn't it? So welcome to everybody here today. And uh, Joyce Lynn, uh, our deacon, will be preaching later on today and we'll be starting a new series on the Lord's Prayer. So some of us have been studying that in our Bible study recently and now we're going to be preaching through that for the next few weeks. And... Uh, that's going to be good. Uh, some other notices. Um, Pastor Williams says the book table will be running again on Saturday the 28th of May. Uh, we run a table outside the church for people who are passing to engage them, uh, give them a drink and discuss our faith with them. So that's the 28th of May, Saturday. <clears throat> and if you want to be involved in that, and anyone who has been can give you a testimony to how uplifting and joyful it is. Beverly's here if you want to ask her. She's been. Uh, Judith uh, and others have been involved. Uh, so do contact Pastor William uh, if you would like to join in that outreach to the people of our neighbourhood. Also, uh, some of you who've been in this church quite a long while will remember a big production that took place here twice called Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. Who remembers that? Oh, quite a lot. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Did any of you come and stay at this church because you watched this? I know there are some people who, uh, who came to faith through this. Uh, it's a very in-your-face presentation of the stark reality that we can only go one of two ways when we move from this world. And uh, we want everybody to go to Heaven's Gates. Now, we aren't putting this production on ourselves, but the local church, the New Covenant Church in Church Street, will be putting this on. And there are leaflets in the foyer if you want the details. And you can contact the church there. If you would like to be part of the cast for that production then you can also phone them up on the contact number and say, I'd love to be part of the cast of this. So that's Heaven's Gates and Hell's Flames. And most important of all, if you've got non-Christian friends and family who you think it's the right time to invite them to something that will really face them up with the truth of the gospel, then please take one of these leaflets and make sure you uh, get your friends along there are, I think, one, two, three performances. So there's plenty of opportunity uh, to do that. So please do that. Um, just to say as well, if you wish to contact me for the next 10 days, I won't be available. So if it's something urgent or you just want to chat to someone, then please uh, contact either Pastor William, Pastor Isaac, or phone the office if it's that kind of thing and I shall be uh, back later on. So uh, let's pray, shall we? Heavenly Father, we pray that as we come into this place, Lord, we might sense that we have come into a place of peace. We've come to meet with the living God, and your Holy Spirit is here, Lord, to bind our hearts together around you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for dying on that cross for us. And Lord, we just want to praise you this morning. We open our hearts so that we might listen and hear what you are talking to us about. Be mighty in this place, we pray. And may your name be lifted up and exalted. Amen. We're going to stand and we're going to read our call to worship together. So if you could bring that up. Thank you. And then when we've read this together, we're going to uh, sit down and watch a short video just to follow up from that as we prepare our hearts uh, to meet with the Lord. So let's say our call to worship together. Come, everyone who is thirsty, here is water. Come, you that have no money, 
buy grain and eat. Come, buy wine and milk. It will cost you nothing. But why spend money on what does not satisfy? Why spend your wages and still be hungry? Listen to me and do what I say, and you will enjoy the best food of all. Listen now, my people, and come to me. Come to me, and you will have life. Amen. Please sit down, and we're going to just watch a short video just to prepare our hearts for our worship today. Thank you. Creatures of God and King, lift up your voice with us. 
Spirit three 
Please sit down. Our children are going to leave us now and go to other parts of the building. So let's just pray as they go. Heavenly Father, we thank you that this church, Lord, you've blessed us with people of all ages and backgrounds, Lord. And we pray for our children and those, Lord, today who seek in other parts of this building to reveal more of Jesus' love for them. Lord, bring out those children to a place where they can truly call you Lord and Saviour. So bless them and their time together this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. If our children would like to come this way, and uh, if you're over 13 and you go with Isaac and into the Upper Discoverers, please go in that direction. And uh, your meeting today will be upstairs in the upper room. So, and I'm going to invite St. John in a moment to lead us in our intercessory prayers. Thank you, St. John. Praise the Lord, church. Please, let's bow down our heads in prayer. Unto the Lord be the glory. Great things you have done, and we know greater things you are going to do. We enter your gates, Father, with thanksgiving in our hearts and into your courts with our praises, singing, this is the very day that you have made, and we rejoice, for truly you have made us glad. No matter the circumstance, Father, ago, we find ourselves, we praise thee. We glorify you, because, Father, ago, we know You are in control of every situation of our lives. No matter how we feel, we believe. And in faith, we believe in you. Father, we come before your presence because many are the things you've done for us. We look into our lives, the very life you've given us. We praise you for it. The strength, Father God, you've placed in our bodies to move and have our being, we praise you for them. The food you've placed on our table, the shelter, the clothing you've given us, we praise you for them. For Father God, you protected us and shielded us from every danger seen and unseen. We praise you for them. We praise you for our brothers, our sisters, our fathers, our mothers, our grandparents, Father, we give you glory and praise for the life you place in all of us. We are thankful to you for the things we see you do for us. And the things we did not see, but we know you have done it. Father of God, we give you praise and honor and glory. For Father, sometimes we don't praise you well enough. But today we want to say thank you for every single thing you've done. Those that we saw and things that we did not see you do, but we know you've done. We render praise, honor, and glory unto your name. For Father, you deserve it. Take your praise, take your honor, take your glory. Because Father, you deserve it. You deserve it. We come to your presence, Father. We know we cannot justify every aspect of our life. We may have seen by actions, our deeds, our words. We may have done things you've asked us not to do. We may, no father of God, have followed your ways. And we know we've missed the mark. We therefore come, Father of God, before your holy presence. And we ask for forgiveness, Father of God. Search our hearts. If there be any sin, iniquity in us, Father of God, we ask for forgiveness. We have not come to justify ourselves before your holy presence, but rather, O God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, that you will forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. We confess the sins on behalf of our God for our children, our mothers, our fathers, our brothers, our sisters, Father of God, that they may also have sinned, Father of God. 
And therefore we ask the Father again, you forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. For your word tells us, if we confess our sins, you are faithful, you are just to forgive us and cleanse us from every unrighteousness. And we believe in this by faith. Because there is no sin, the Father of God, the blood of Christ cannot cleanse. And therefore we thank you and bless you for lifting the burden of sin off our hearts. And setting us free, Father of God, to walk in your righteousness once again. And by faith we claim what you've given to us. The freedom, Father of God, out of sin. We give you glory and praise, Father. We look into our world. Ukraine, Russia, we see the battle which is going on. We give you glory, even though in pain. We look at Father of God, the East, China, Taiwan, North Korea. We see what is happening. Father of God, potentially what is going to happen. Japan and the rest. We look to the Middle East. We see Iran, Jerusalem. Syria, Turkey, the crisis over there. Father of God, you warned us through your son that this is the beginning of sorrow. Father of God, we witness what we are saying now and we cannot even bear it. But you said this is the beginning of sorrow. We ask for your mercy, Father of God, upon your word. We ask for your mercy. Father, forgive us. The pain that many are going through, Father God, heal them of the pain. The suffering of anger, shelter, no people. Father God, suffering so much they cannot hold. And people cannot witness or see this. We ask for your mercy. Father, bring peace to our world. You've told us already, but we need peace in our world. Father of God, to bring us to a state to know that we are in the last days. Father, set our hearts to righteousness. That because we know we are in the last days, you've told us. Let us not desire the things of the world, but rather desire the things of righteousness. Because we are in the last days, we've seen that beginning of sorrow you talked about. But we ask for your mercy. We ask of your mercy. If no, Father of God, our faith, Father of God, would drink them. Increase our faith in these troubling times. And bring peace to our world. We bring the leaders into your hands and we pray that you will touch their hearts. And all that we ask, that your will will be done on this earth. Let your will be done. We may not know it all, but let your will be done. And give us strength, faith, and courage to hold on our faith and to believe in your son and what you have for us. Father Lord, we come as a church before you. We all have our challenges, our problems. Some of us have health problem issues, problems in the workplace. Problems with our homes, divisions, Father of God, fighting every around with our siblings, Father of God, family members, so much challenges, not being able to put food even on our table sometimes. We all can, Father of God, with our own unique problems. But today we lay our problems before you, Father of God, because we know you care. Because we know we can come to you and you will set us free, Father God, from our burdens which we carry. Both upon our soul and upon our body. So we ask that you bring healing to those who bring, want healing. Father God, you put food on the tables of those who are wanting. Father, be a blessing to us, Father God, at our point of need. Increase us, Father God, in every field that, Father God, we cry upon you. Father God, be there for us. For we have no one but thee. Thee alone can we trust and rely on. We give you glory and we give you praise. We thank you for today. The service for today and we ask the Father of God you take absolute control. 
Let your will be done. Let your word penetrate through our hearts. Let us, Father of God, be doers of your word and not hear us alone to deceive ourselves. And at the end, Father of God, we want you to take your glory and that Father of God will hold your banner and will let your glory be seen by the outside world. And we will celebrate you as our Lord and our God. To you be the glory. To you be all honor. And the saints of God shall say, Amen. God bless you. I want to thank you, Lord, as well for the offerings that come in week by week into this church family and into all those churches, Lord, who are meeting together in your name. Lord, we pray a blessing on the offerings that will be given today as people leave this building. Lord, um, sometimes that giving is sacrificial. And we, know, we don't know that, but Lord, you see the hearts of every giver and you love a cheerful giver. So Lord, bless our offerings, but thank you, Lord, for the provision you have made for us day by day. Amen. We'll stand to sing. Let's stand, shall we? touch those who, for whom this song is particularly poignant and they're crying out to you, Lord, because 
at the moment either they're in, in pain or they have a loved one in a hospital or going through health problems. Lord, those who are looking after loved ones as they grow older, the challenges of that, the tiredness that comes with it. But Lord, you are faithful. And Lord, even through those times, maybe even in those times, Lord, we pray that they will be ministered to you, ministered to by you in such a way, Lord, that they will know your love in a way that they've never known it so strong before. Lord, you're faithful. You're unchanging. You're the ageless one. You're our rock of peace. Lord, we depend on you. You are my rock in times of trouble. You lift me up when I fall down. All through the storm, your love is the especially for Curleen this week, Lord. We pray for Hazel. Lord, we pray for Lily. Lord, we pray for Rebecca and Alvin. Lord, those who are really going through challenges this week. For Nikki, as she recovers from her operation. Bless you, Lord. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee, thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not, as thou Great is thy faithfulness. 
Please sit down. Pastor William's going to come now and read our scripture for us. Thank you. Good morning, church. Today's reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 9 to 15. The Lord says, this then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, may your holy name be honored. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we forgive the wrongs that others have done to us. Do not bring us to hard testing, but keep us safe from the evil one. If you forgive others the wrongs they have done to you, your Father in heaven will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, then your Father will not forgive the wrongs you have done. This is the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask Joyce Lynn, one of our deacons, to come and preach uh, through this passage for us. Thank you, Joyce Lynn. Morning, everyone. Welcome to another Sunday service at Edmonton Baptist Church. We are welcoming you who are attending at home as well, and those who will watch the recorded version later. Is there anyone worshiping for the first time with us today? Yeah, I thought I didn't recognize you. Welcome. Michelle? Do they belong to you? Okay, <laughs> all right. We will find out more later. But you're very welcome. And we hope that the Lord blesses your soul today. And then there are others that I have not seen for a long time, and they're here today. And so a very special welcome to you if you are returning after a long time. I want to greet you in the words Paul the Apostle used at the start of all his letters to the churches. He said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Today we all heed the call to worship our Savior and King and we pray that the words will stir us and stir our hearts to action. We are starting a new series, as Pastor Stephen said, for Sunday services. And this series will be dealing with the Lord Prayer. We'll be looking at, in detail at the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer is part of what we know as the Sermon on the Mount as set out in Matthew chapters 5 to 7, where Jesus tells us how to pray. Luke chapter 11 and verses 2 to 4 also details the Lord's Prayer. Prayer and how we pray is the subject of so much controversy. Should our prayers be short and to the point? Should they be long, very long? What is the language that we should use in prayer? Are there certain phrases to use and certain phrases to avoid? What is to be said about loud, public, and seemingly powerful prayers or soft, private prayers? All this argument, when Jesus, the one more qualified than anyone else, has given us the model the pattern, the way to pray. 
in the Sermon on the Mount, which we have been studying in our weekly Thursday Bible study held on Zoom at 8 p.m. Did you hear the advert that I just inserted? Shall I repeat it? Thursday, Bible study, 8 p.m. on Zoom. There. Yes, we have been studying the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus gathered his disciples, and if you read from the King James Version, it says, he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That is the first of nine Beatitudes, describing those who are blessed and moving on to radical teachings on every area of our lives and the standards by which we who are called to be different. You know that that is a particular favorite phrase of mine. Those of us who are called to be different we who are Christians and followers of Christ, the standards by which we are expected to live. As I said earlier, the focus over the next few weeks will be on the Lord's Prayer, and we start today with an overview of this model prayer, after which we will look at various elements in detail. But before we launch into the overview, let us pause for a moment and reflect on our experiences of the Lord's Prayer. It is probably at the top of the list of Bible passages committed to memory. Almost everybody knows the Lord's Prayer. It's taught by parents until a few years ago. It was taught in all schools, said in almost every Christian church. The daily service is a 15-minute Christian worship presentation on BBC Radio 4. It's broadcast from Monday to Friday, and this is a program presented by Christians of many different denominations. And the one thing that must be included in every single presentation is the Lord's Prayer. We learned it without any explanation or Father, which art in heaven. Those words, that's not so hard. That's kind of, I understood that. But hallowed be thy name, hallowed, I didn't know what that meant. Growing up, I didn't know, didn't ask. We repeat the Lord's Prayer without thinking. We rush through it without paying attention. So much so that in one church I know well, that's my church in Jamaica, it is not said at all because the bishop felt it was merely being repeated. Now I know he missed the important remedy. And what he needed to do was a series of sermons, Pastor Stephen, a series of sermons on this prayer, which was given for our benefit. And as a way to truly pray. I am glad, I am blessed, I have learned so much in this preparation. And my prayer is that throughout this series, we all learn in a way that changes our lives, revives and makes better this offering of prayer. That we see it as the great privilege and indeed the great gift that it is. And never again will we say the Lord's Prayer in a mechanical repetition. But as one writer puts it, we will say the Lord's Prayer praying from the heart with our minds and our whole being. What I'll call, we'll pray fully focused. Jesus took time to teach his disciples how to pray. And this pattern for prayer follows directly from verses 5 to 8, which is a lesson in how not to pray, not to show, not for show, or for the praises of those around us. 
but praying to God only. This is how you should pray, says Jesus. And he begins by naming God the one to whom our prayer is directed. He addresses him as Father. Father who cares and looks after his children, who provides for them, whose desire it is to see them attain their very best. Don't be distracted now by your own father or what you are thinking, what might have been, what was lovely, what was not so good. This father is the perfect father. Every attribute that a father should have, he has it. And we've just sung, great is his faithfulness. So father who is high above the earth, creator and sustainer, yet also with us, his children. Our Father, we are family. God has brought us back to himself through Jesus. And as we lift our prayers to him, we understand hallowed to mean holy, worthy, blessed, and honorable is his name. Amen. And from this point, I will read the Lord's Prayer from the Passion Translation. Make known your kingdom and cause your every purpose to be fulfilled on earth just as it is fulfilled in heaven. We acknowledge you as our provider of all we need each day. Forgive us the wrongs we have done as we ourselves release forgiveness to those who have wronged us. And for the final section of the prayer, we turn to the message version. Keep us safe from ourselves and the devil. You're in charge. You can do anything you want. You are ablaze in beauty. Yes, yes, yes. And now we go back to the beginning of the prayer to look closely at just four words, our Father in heaven. In teaching his disciples to use the words our Father, Jesus shows us, according to Spurgeon, that the strong, the feeble, the weak are all one in Christ now. They are one in the family of God. Brothers and sisters of Jesus are all those who have given their lives to Christ. So in the spirit of family, I am going to introduce to you some members of our family here today. And I did warn them beforehand. I'm not springing it on them. So I want you to meet Vivian, who is on the sound desk. You stand for us, please, Vivian. They can't see your face. <laughs> That's Vivian on, this, on the video desk down there. And then I want you to meet Vinola. Would you stand for us, please, Vinola? You have to take your mask down so we can see your whole face. That's Vinola. And then if I turn to this side, I want to ask you to meet Demi. Would you stand for us, please, Demi? Turn around. Yes? That's Demi. And just so you don't say it's all ladies, I am now going to ask Daphne and Peter to stand. That's Peter. That's Daphne. Make sure that if you have never spoken to any of these brothers and sisters that I have introduced this morning, if you have never said hello to them, you find them at the end of the service. You say, my name is Clyde Della. <laughs> and it's lovely to meet you. That way you get to know four, five other people that you didn't know before. Okay. So our father, this form of address is for those who truly know 
and have come into a right relationship with God and who find out what it means for all our lives, the innumerable, meaning countless privileges that come with having God as our Father. To paraphrase Spurgeon, I am God's child. If so, he will clothe me, not merely with garments that I need in my daily life, but also with the robe of my Savior's righteousness, the best robe. And he has also said that he will put a crown of pure gold on my head as a child of a king. He feeds the birds, then he will feed me. My bread shall be given to me, and my water shall be sure. He that feeds the ravens will never let his children starve. I might endure some hardship, but I have confidence in the Lord that he will be my help. My father knows what things I have need of before I ask him. He sends his Holy Spirit to live in me and promises me a home above. And Romans chapter 8, verses 16 to 18 say, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings, the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. As his child, I can come boldly to him in prayer, and in so doing, Martin Lloyd-Jones, eminent 20th century Christian minister advises, before you begin any petition, before you begin to ask even for your daily bread, before you ask for anything, just realize that you, such as you are, are in the presence of such a being, your Father, which is in heaven, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. With the family-like intimacy, God may be addressed as Father, but he remains the transcendent God, the Most High, always to be approached in awe and reverence. We are urged to remember that we are approaching the Almighty, the Eternal, the ever-blessed Holy God. But remember also that God in Christ has become our Father, who not only knows about us in the sense that he knows everything, but also in the sense that as a father, he knows his child. He knows what is good for his child. If we put these things together, we see that God in his almightiness is looking at us in a holy love and knows our every need. As your father, which is in heaven, he is much more anxious to bless us than we are to be blessed. He is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. There is no limit to his almighty power, and he can bless us with the blessings of heaven. When we pray, we are speaking to the creator of the universe, who as our Father in heaven also demands our obedience and will correct us and bring us back to him in ways we might find sometimes difficult. But as a father, that is something he has to do. And our prayer is also to ask to be kept on the right path, to allow ourselves to be led by the Holy Spirit and to repent when we stray. You'll recognize this verse from the song, Wonderful, Merciful Savior. I wish I could sing it for you, but as you know, I can't turn a note. 
So, I'll read. It's such a beautiful prayer. It says, Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in our weakness you'll find us, falling before your throne. Lloyd-Jones says, prayer is beyond any question the highest activity of the human soul. Man is at his greatest and highest when upon his knees he comes face to face with God. Prayer means speaking to God, forgetting ourselves and realizing his presence. And Nicky Gumbel of Alpha Course fame says, prayer is the most important activity of all our lives because it is the main way in which we develop a relationship with our Father in heaven. Jesus knew this. The disciples sensed it. In Luke's account, it is after they had just seen Jesus praying that they said, Lord, teach us to pray like John the Baptist taught his disciples. And by the opening words of the prayer, our Father in heaven, we are taught the correct attitude and spirit in which we should pray to God. Addressing him as our Father, we look up to him in love and faith as the one who is near us in perfect love and grace. And to conclude, in the Lord's Prayer, Jesus further reveals himself. In using the pronoun our, he speaks of family, a relationship, a community. He glorifies our Father as worthy honorable, and mighty. He prays that God's kingdom be established worldwide and that his will will prevail in us as it does in heaven. He shows his concern for the physical needs of our body as he does for our spiritual needs as we are told to pray to be merciful and forgiving as God has forgiven us. And he returns again to praise the greatness of God to whom all glory belongs forever. So, as we ponder, as we look closely at the Lord's Prayer, how will we respond? Every time God speaks to us, it is a call to action. We must, in addition to listening, do something. We must act. Sometimes we hear a prayer asking that we do not leave our church service in the same state in which we came in, meaning that we learn something, we come to a resolve, we come to a decision. God is further added to our lives. That is a good prayer. What should be our response, I ask again. And I invite you to pledge with me that from now on, I will see this prayer as Jesus intended me to see it. I will not rush through the Lord's Prayer. In whatever assembly, whatever group or situation I find myself, I will pray mindfully and consciously noting every word and every phrase. Let us stand and let us pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Remain standing. We're going to sing our final song. Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne. And we the redeemed shall be strong in purpose and unity. God is our Father, declaring aloud praise and glory, wisdom and thanks, honour and power and strength. Salvation belongs to our God. able to keep you from falling and to bring you faultless and joyful before his glorious presence. To the only God our Saviour through Jesus Christ our Lord be glory, majesty, might and authority from all ages past and now and forever and ever. Now the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and fill you with his peace today and always. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Have a, have a good week. <laughs>